Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Ustah Mavundla and you are watching Star Talks, where we walk the walk. Now we have our very first guest, the also dynamic, timeless Mr. Magic, Linda Svea, who is the chairman and CEO of Magic Media Group. With 20 years experience in radio and a respected man in media in South Africa, with a timeless brand that has lasted for so long. Hello, Mr. Svia. Hi, Star. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing very well. That's good. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. Now, for those who aren't so familiar with who you are, can you just <laughs> tell us in your own words who is Linda Svia? Thank you. I'm Linda Svia, Mr. Magic. I was born in Tishore in 19, 1974. Um, I wanted to become a radio DJ and a TV presenter. When I was young, it was hard at home because my father had four wives. And then from one man, we are 33. So growing up, it was not nice. But I wanted to be on top. I remember at a young age, I said I'll become something when I was nine years old. And then my father said, no, if you finish standard five, you must go and work. Or when you finish um, metric, you must go and work. Because my father believed that when you finish, you must go and work. The university and the college, it was not like that to him. So, but I wanted to have something and then make a difference in my family. Mm, mm, that's so inspiring. <laughs> wow. So you actually wanted to go there and work. What are you working on right now, actually? What businesses or projects are you currently involved in? What we have Magic Media Group and then we bring uh, advertising and marketing. And then I have uh, Magic Broadcasting Academy. We've just launched Magic Broadcasting Academy uh, before the COVID-19 mm -hmm. uh, at Umpolo Z uh, TV in KZN in, in, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And again, we are about to launch in, in Devon the Magic Broadcasting Academy uh, number two campus. We say number two campus. And then we'll be going to Mpumalango to launch the number three campus and then go to Eastern Cape for the number four campus. So I'm busy with that. But Linda, as a brand, we are, I'm busy with my book. Um, it's not over with Mr. Magic. They, they are busy editing my book. And then the second book, Linda, the radio man. It's just about radio. So I'm busy with that. And then I have the CSI project under Linda Svea uh, Foundation Trust. So I'm busy with that. Wow, that is quite a lot of things that you're busy with at the moment. <laughs> what what actually inspired and motivated you to do all that you're doing right now? You know, I, I think someone who's behind my brand, I will say it, is, it was Bordozan the Monday because he was my station manager. He came to our boardroom and he said, guys, if you want to study, please tell us as a management, then we can tell the SABC in Johannesburg. And uh, if you want to start the business, tell me why. And I said, no, I want to start the business because I was thinking that I'm on radio and I'm doing my TV show. It is better that you follow your passion because my father, in fact, before he became a security guard, he had a supermarket and a beer hall. And I had that thing in, 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 in my heart to say, I'll have a business. And I said to him, no, I'll start the business. It was 2006. And then I registered Magic Communications and Events Consultants. And then 2008, I started the Magic Talk, going to universities. So I was inspired by my, my, by my father. And because I remember when I was young, I was told that he was a good salesman. So I think Obama and Yamlande like a cool. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. That's quite inspiring, Wuti Ulandel and the footsteps of um, Ubab. My dad, yeah. 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 Now, now, I want to know something, right? Yeah. How did you know that you had found your thing? Because you hear so many people are like, okay, no, they do this or they do that. But when was your aha moment? This is what I'm meant to be doing right now. Maybe let me rewind and go back. When I was in Johannesburg, not I was not a street kid, but I used to find myself sleeping in petrol stations and then sometimes on the streets of Johannesburg. I wanted to become a radio DJ. And then I'll walk from Hillbro, if you know Johannesburg, to SABC Monday to Friday. I'll sit on the radio side of the 
parted, they said, you see, and the TV part. And then whoever that was on radio, I will just tell you, I want to become a radio DJ. I will become a TV presenter. But Trudy Dalian gave me an opportunity to, to do the cause, TV and radio technicalities for performance. Mm. And she said to me, can you just show it to me that you, you are capable? Why? I know you've got a nice voice, but can you do it? And then one link, I am in this way, Mr. Magic, one, two, three, four, five. And then she said to me, wow, definitely you can do it. Then they gave me an opportunity to do that course. And after that, I worked for Ray Domaris back as a freelancer. And then I applied to Cause FM. But to find your wow moment, if you, you know, I, I work radio, I speak radio, I eat radio. You, you you know it that you you are the one you know this is your thing mm. and you at night you can wake me up at two o'clock in the morning sir, and say be a wake up do something can you record the ad for me i'll do it because in your heart i'm not doing it for money and then young people they come to me and say i want to be famous i want to have money i can mm. see what you're driving and i tell them no you must pursue your passion mm. you must find this in your heart to go to I can die for what I love the most. I mean, I told her the wow moment, the day at the SABC in 1993, when they gave me an opportunity. Mm. Wow. That's, that's, <laughs> that's absolutely inspiring. Wow. So like living, breathing, whatever it is that you are passionate about and walking through that, yeah. Mm. And to, and to start, if yeah. I call you at two o'clock in the morning and say, um, Star, the CNN or SABC want to interview you, mm. you mustn't think twice. You must say, okay, give me two minutes. I'll be live. Because mm. you are living your passion. You, you know you love this. You can die for this. And I remember when I met uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, the late, and I said to Dad, I said, you, you, I read your book, Maximizing the Moment. I think every day I maximize the moment. Mm. But how, did, when I, as Dr. Miles Monroe thought to good when I, you are maximizing your moment? He said, when I was young, I was busy writing. So the pen and your hand and his hand was here, mm. writing, writing. Meaning at any time, at any given time, if you say to me, let's go and speak, I say, come on, I'm here. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's quite inspiring. Now with yeah. with all of that and the the projects that you are doing and also radio and how you're passionate about it, obviously you're not alone, right? You've got a team. And I believe you so, call them the A team, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah, A yeah. team. How did yeah. you go about putting them together and finding people? that we're going to be able to have the same passion and the same vision as you have as Linda Svia, the brand. How did you? I, I think, you, you know, if you have, you have the A team and then the B team and the C team, not they're, not, they're not the same, but they are capable of doing whatever that you give it to them. But your A team, if I call Sita now and say to Sita, uh, Bam, Mr. Bam, will you please write a document to a Tegwini municipality, or can you write a document to a Department of Art and Culture? Mm -hmm. I am proposing one, two, three. You have the background. I've given you the background. Can you do it? I know in one hour I'll have my document. So you can see your team can they can they can see me when I walk into my boardroom. Mm -hmm. They know me, but not today. What's wrong? They don't call me boss. I'm not a boss. I'm not a CEO. I'm not a founder. I'm the leader. Leader, what's the, prep? What, what's the problem? Mm. Then I tell them, no, 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 I'm going through some stuff. And then if I'm in a meeting and then they can see me, which this meeting is not going anywhere. Sita will know. He will try and close the meeting because he can see this meeting is not going anywhere. And then you not know that you tell them, you dump and then guys and then they jump but they, they move with you they like you are you are playing chess you are they, they, when you think when you move they know we can move with this guy mm -hmm. so you're 18 like with Julie Mbambo Julie Mbambo she, she she's great she's dynamic I met Julie Mbambo when she was doing grade 11 mm -hmm. I was just doing the motivation 
And then she said, after, after the session, she came to me, what if I want to have your number or you take my number. When I finish my matric, I'll call you. When I go to the university, I'll give you a call. And I said, okay, okay, give me your number. And I took a number and then I left and I gave her my number. I'm giving a student my number. She finished matric and then she called me, Mr. Sibia, I've just finished. Now I'm going to the university. I said, okay, oh, well done. And then, sure, after three years, Mrs. Spear, I'm about to finish. After four years, I'm done with my degree, Mrs. Spear. I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, now you are looking for, for a job, man. Okay, good luck. One day, she came to my office. She said, no, I've been looking for your office. And I believe I want to work with you. Mm. I said, but there are no vacancies. Mm. She said, no, okay, but I'm coming back tomorrow, boss. I want to work with you. Wow. Can I volunteer, Mr. Sbeer? And she came back. And then one day, my receptionist was not there. And I said, can you be um, just one day? Just sit here. Just, you know, answer calls. And then she was there. The second day, the third day. And then she ended up being my PA mm. because of the passionate. And, I, and you can see when you work with people, okay, wow, this person, mm. there's something they believe in and they understand your vision. It is bad to have a team who doesn't understand and believe in you and doesn't understand your vision. They must know you mm. A to Z. This is our team leader. This is about our leader, mm. not the boss. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's so inspiring. <laughs> that she was so adamant and she's like, I want to work with you. Can, can you imagine how I met Sita? Um, I was in Johannesburg. I was um, in a meeting having a breakfast in the morning. And then this guy was sitting, I was sitting across. And then when I finished my meeting, one gentleman left. And then Sita came and say, hi, good morning. I believe I'm Linda Spear. And I said, yes, I'm Linda Spear. He said, do you have a moment? And I said, yes. He said, uh, please, do you mind if I can call you? May I have your number? I said, regarding what? He said, I believe that I have to work with you. I said, okay, take my number. Give me your number. I'll call you. After two weeks, I was in Deben, I met Sita. And then I, I gave him a test. I said, will you please write this document for me? Within an hour, he sent me a document. And then after two weeks, I said, what are you doing? He said, no, I'm doing nothing. I said, can you work with me? That was 2016. And 2016, 2017, 18, 19, 20. Wow. We've been together. <laughs> wow. Okay. So clearly you don't have a formula as to how you get your people. Can, can you imagine now my PA, um, <laughs> gosh, Lufuno now, because Lufuno joined the group. Yes. I was taking my son to Vega uh, in uh, Ledusa in Devon. Mm. And then she was there taking all the details of my son. And then we finished. And then I said to my son, she is very smart. He said to me, yes. After six months, I went back and she was not there. And then I asked the lady, where is Lufuno? She said to me, no, she resigned. I said, do you, do you mind if you can give me her number? And then she gave me a number. I called Lufuno and said, Lufuno, hey, it's Linda here. I said, hi, Mrs. B, how are you doing? I said, okay, where, where are you at? She said, no, no, I'm, a, I'm about to study uh, because now I'm tired of working. I said, okay, but do you mind if I can see you tomorrow? She said, yes. And she came into my office. We had one breakfast. I said, okay. I said, you are here. You want to work for me? And then you can study part-time. She still, she, she works for Magic Media Group. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So you can pick. You, the minute we talk, the yeah. minute we, we engage, just yeah. when you converse, you can see, okay, there's something. Yeah. Mm, so mm. I'm Mr. Magic. I can see the magic in you. Mm, then I wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another question I'd like for us to address just with all of that now is with your team and everyone, um, especially with the coronavirus that none of us were expecting, how have you, together with your team, uh, adjusted to this time with COVID-19? What have been the changes that you've made with Magic Media Group and any of your other projects that you're involved in? Uh, we, we talk every day, Monday to Friday. Uh, we see Fe and uh, Lufuno, and then I have Upasega. Um, we engage and then we change ideas. 
And then uh, now we are busy with the uh, Linda Spear Foundation. We are about to give uh, food parcels from the, into my village, Eshowe. We are going back to give back. Um, so it's important that you just, Akimatik, let me say this. If you have a team, your team must have strategies for you as a leader to give you a call and say, now we have COVID-19. Mm. We have one, two, three ideas. Mm. Let's pack the magic media group, marketing and advertising. Let's deal with Linda Sevilla Foundation. Mm. Can we approach uh, Mondi? Can we approach RMB? Can we uh, approach uh, Umgen Water, our client? And then we went back to our clients and said, hey, it's COVID-19. What can we do? It's not my concept. It's not my idea. Uh, but the ideas are coming from your team. So let your team run their race and then run your race. Because if they're not with me, they are running. And I tell them, run your race that is set before you. But while you're doing that, you must say, how can I run my leader's race? Because he's not here. Let me think. And then you think out of the box. Give me ideas. And then I can push other CEOs and say, hey, I want to do something with um, the Industria Foundation. And then you do it. So my team, they're very um, creative. So we talk each and every day. It's 24-7. I love Sife. I love Lufuno and um, Pasega and Chile. I work with soldiers. They know what is happening on the ground. Sure. Yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful. <laughs> are there any other challenges that you have had to face in the past other than COVID-19? Are there any other challenges that you've had to come through with your team? Sure. You know, it's, I tell Sifa and the team and say, let's have a lot of proposals. Mm. And um, I remember we went to I'm not going to mention the company's name, but we went to a company to do a presentation. And then that day, I was testing Musife. He's comfortable about this. And, and I was testing him and I said, okay, today, do the presentation. Okay? Yeah. You've seen people who are in the meeting. And Sita is a gentleman. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a bulldozer. Sita is, is very polite. I mean, I want to push. So he was doing, you know, a nice presentation. Um, you know, slide by slide, you know. <laughs> this guy was annoyed in the meeting. He said, ah, ah. He said to him, ah. was making noise, funny noise. Ah. And I was like, what is happening? He said to Sifle, my brother, I've read your, your proposal. I know what is happening. Can you just please, just please finish, Mr. Spear. Help your guy. You know, <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, I've got another meeting. Please, can we just go straight? What do you want from us? Mm. You know, you're in a meeting, you're with your man that you trust, he does great work. Mm. You have seen people in the meeting. Mm. I have to be nice to sit, I have to, ni to be nice and show professionalism to mm. them. And I said, okay, no, thank you so much. This guy, I love him, he's polite, he's my main man. Guys, let me tell you, let's go straight to the budget. We want so much money from you guys. We want to work with you. And I know you are rushing, you're going to another meeting, mm. but let's just, have, let's just close this deal now, conclude the meeting with a positive note. Uh, on behalf of the Magic Media Group mm. and Sita Palm, I know is that Sita has been doing a lot of um, uh, sending emails to your PA and also to your manager, your line manager, but as a CEO, you are here and I'm here. I think from now on, let deal with me because I want this deal and then we're gonna make it and then we will make it work for your company. Mm. The guy, and I laughed and I said to him, I will do the same thing that you are doing. Ah, oh, I want this man. And then he laughed. Everyone laughed in the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what do you do? You have to calculate. So challenges that we had in the business is when you go and do a presentation and then the email that you received is positive. You get into the boardroom, it's something else. Mm. And then you you are about to do something for the client. You're going to record the ad for the client for the radio station. And then the client will come on set and say, I don't want this ad. I don't want to, uh, no, I don't want this voice. I don't, mm. I don't want staff. I want so-and-so. 
So those are the challenges when you're dealing with clients like radio ads and TV ads and sometimes for the print media. So you need to come down, tell your team at any time we have bosses out there, our clients respect them. And I tell them, if you come across a challenge every time, there's no Wusa time. Think, think, what can I tell my clients so that they come down? I can see they are wrong. Okay, this is a challenge to the SAPC or to this radio station. Then we come down. Because if both of you, you are angry, mm. nothing will come out. Okay, so both of you are going through the fire. So those challenges, when you teach them, sometimes they say, No, Mrs. Spear, I was supposed, you were supposed to be hard on them. No, we, we, we prepared for this presentation for the past two weeks. I say, no, come down. Every day, you come down. And A, once you finish the, meet- the, the, the meeting mm-hmm. or whatever, the recording, mm-hmm. then later, I can call the CEO mm-hmm. or call the COO and say, my brother, can I have coffee with you? Mm-hmm. Can we talk a glass of, over a glass of wine so that we, we can, you know, talk about this so challenges are there but you need to calm down your team and say come down and then relax Mm -hmm. so you're like leading the whole control of emotion as well through that yeah yeah it is very important important because i i I tell people i say um no 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 pain and no gain so if you you want everything to be smooth every time you must go through something in the business you need to come down come up with strategies um, go through the pain so then you're going to gain something so everything that you go through when you are crying I think is, uh, is powerful when I call them in the morning at 2 o'clock mm-hmm. and send emails in the morning at 4 in the morning they say wow at first they were saying oh this guy doesn't sleep uh, but now they understand if you want to get a, 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 a powerful uh, email from me if it's at 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning at 5 that email you must know who would know he prepared like a grand eye Mm. But eight o'clock, seven, no. So you need to teach your team about what now get ready. You're going to face this client. I think they don't understand because they give you money. Mm. So come down and relax, but stick to the plan. Mm. Every day, whatever decision you took in the boardroom, mm. when you go to the client, mm. stick to the plan, but have weights. Pick ways that they can understand. Don't upset your client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I, li- I like what you said there. That you have to keep, um, you have to keep going through the pain. And now, I have a question, which leads me to my next question: Is <laughs> what on. keeps you going despite the pain, despite the difficulty? What What is that driving force that keeps you going all the time? Yeah. Let me go back. My mother died in 2017. Um, I remember 2014, the SAPC terminated my contract while I was doing my breakfast show with Uko ZFM. And then I drove home to see my mother, to give to give her the news. And I said to my mother, I am ma, I'm no more working for, uh, for the radio station. And then she asked me three things. One, I, I, am I still going to get food? <laughs> and I said, yes. Uh, my, t- my TV, she was talking about the DSTV. I said, yes. Electricity, and I said, yes. She said to me, I believe in you. You were not born at the ACBC. I know your name is my friend mm. I know you're going to do it. Mm. And I left home and I said, wow, my mother believes in me. Mm. I'm going to make it again. And she said to me, I remember you were a security guard mm. and you used to sell apples in a train after school. Mm. And my, my son has made it. After Ukozi, whatever you've been through, you're going to make it. In life, star, you need one person mm. to believe in you. Mm. I want to say to you, I believe in you. Someone to say to you, I love your concept. Mm. Someone to say to you, hey, it's not, it's not over. You're going to make it. And then if you hear those words, 
then you get encouraged. So I think every day I'm highly, highly motivated because each and every pain that I've been through or a trial and a tribulation, I've learned something out of that. There's something that I've learned. After COVID-19, COVID-19, there's something that we'll talk about one day and say, wow, we stayed at home. It was the lockdown, mm-hmm. but it's something that we've learned. So whatever I've been through, I am highly motivated. What motivates me is that I'm still living. Mm-hmm. I'm not dead. Mm-hmm. As I'm not dead, nothing is impossible. I'll make it again. Mm. As long as I am running my race that is set before me. Mm. I said to one guy, it's important when people gossip about you, mm. tell them I'm deaf. Mm. If, if you see something written about you, tell them I'm blind. Mm. I'm born mm. so that you can motivate yourself. It, sometimes you need to motivate yourself and then run your race. Sure. Yeah. And <laughs> just, just thinking now, um, knowing that you're also a person of faith, right? You're a believer and um, you're also in business. Yeah. A question of mine would be, because there's this opinion, right, of business people being ruthless and corrupt and having evil hearts and all of this, how do you balance the two? How do you balance being a successful businessman as well as still being a believer and and holding your faith holding on to your faith how do you balance the two i think what we do in our office we we pray um, we say we give god all the glory and honor and then i normally say god give me the wisdom that you gave solomon mm. and god give me the heart that you gave mandela mm. and god let me be fearless like Ushaka, the King Shaka. Mm-hmm. Let me be strong like him. And then I believe in you because you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Coming to business, when you think of a black man driving a nice car, living in a big house, is corruption. Mm. If a black man is getting 100 million, is corruption. Mm. If a black man is getting one 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 point six million is corruption. So it is painful to be a black man in business. It is painful to be a black business woman in this <laughs> in these years because things when you are taken as a corrupt person. But when I sit around business people, I tell them that the mistake that you're going to do you want to say, I'm black, I'm black, I'm black, I'm black, I'm black. And then you want to apolo- to be apologetic that you are successful. Listen, Star, and the viewers, your followers. I'm not apologetic that I'm Linda mm. If I go to the department, the department, the department give me 10 million, 20 mm. million, 100 million. Mm. Let me use that money for the business and then people, they must benefit from the money that I've received from the any department. If I get money from the corporate, from Umgeni, from Woolies, from Chopra Checkers, let that money be useful so that people, they can benefit out of that. As long as you go to bed at night, knowing with whatever they've, say, they, they've been saying about you, you are free and then you are okay. That, but unless you, were not, you go to bed and then you know you've done something wrong, then you must deal with that and then come out clean and say, no, it's not me. So in, in business, if you're a business person, please, it's fine. The operation 100 years ago, um, people have benefited and then now it's our time. Try and push until it breaks. And then make sure that your ideas and then your, 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 your concepts, your projects, give it to God when you pray. And then when you start implementing those projects, you must understand that you will be judged. And then you are, when you are not the same like who oh, Mr. Van der Mevo or who Jeremy, when you use Zander Zonke, when you use Magic Media Group, mm. so when you will be judged. So it means you must have accountants in your business. You must have 
proper people, you can even hire someone from the bank to be your finance manager yeah. to say, deal with my books so that when SARS come into my business, everything is in order. So this is what I do. I must have someone in the business from the bank. Go to FNB, go to uh, Absa Bank and say, hey, how many years have you been working here? And then that person will say, no, I've been working for the bank for the, for the past 20 years. Mm-hmm. And then say, I'm giving you an opportunity. Um, I've got a big deal. I want you to be my financial director. So you know, you have someone that knows numbers in your business. Go on out so that when they try to judge you, when they come, they can speculate, they can say things about you. But when you go in a court of law, when mm-hmm. you say, oh, help me God, you know mm-hmm. that my books are clean. And when you are acquitted, in whatever that has been it's been said about you, mm. you know that I am fine. I can go to bed peacefully. The mistake that you're going to do, you will just have people in finance, and they don't know anything about finance. You go and call your aunt or your your cousin to come and work in your business. No, you must run a business, a proper business, and then you must have people who who are going to mentor you. People who've been around. In, yeah. in KZN days, Moses Dembe days, Ted Zulus, and then again, go to Jeremy, go and call Mike, go and call that person, sit with them and say, hey, you've been running your business. Can you mentor me? Can yeah. I have one hour once a month with yeah. you? And then they'll give you that. So I do that. Yeah. I believe in God, it's fine. But Romans, they say work and pray. So you must work and yeah. also pray. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. <laughs> so- I love how that advice was so practical. You know? I love how it was so practical in that you basically saying, okay, when you need to look at who you're going to be hiring, you need to look at it from an objective point of view and have the vision of doing things correctly. That's, that's so, cool. Sometimes you start in, yeah. in your business, you must sit in the boardroom when what I do, I go to my office early in the morning mm. um, and I sit in my boardroom and then I look at um, at my team efforts and then I say okay that one that one okay sure and then look at their qualifications and then if you are a leader enough you will say let me get someone who's learned than me mm. in your business mm. Mm. pay that person a lot of money so they can take your business to another level mm. and I come to Star and say Star you, are, you, you have MBA and then you are working for Standard Bank or you're working for IMF and then you're getting 150 a month. I'm offering you 200,000, but this is what I want from you. Mm. I'm giving you five months. In these five months, please, I want to get my money times seven, mm. but I want you to run the business. So because you have a COO who is learned in your business, if you are not there, but on top of that, as a black person, you say, I'm giving you 10% into the business. You'll be getting dividends in my business. So if you're not there, they are meeting my COOs, you're not there, you are covered. Hmm. The, report, the report that you're going to get, it will be on the tick because the level of understanding and the thinking behind that person is powerful. So don't be afraid of having power, powerful people around you. I tell my team, I say, you are learning and you are powerful. You are a graduate, you are a graduate. Power. You must have a team that you understand. If you're not there, they can take your business into another level. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually where the success lies, where you're able to leave your business and it still runs without you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'd like to know now as well, you've achieved all the success that you have in your life and you are a name that will be remembered long after you have passed on in this earth clearly because of your timeless brand already and all the things that you're doing but what i want to know everyone defines success in a different way (laughs) success for someone else looks different to the success um, of another person I would like to know what is success to you? What is success to Linda Sbia? How does Linda Sbia define success? What is it to you? Wow, <laughs> you bad. <laughs> you, you bad. <laughs> One friend of mine 
it was uh, during the motivation um the uh, timber uh, you know we have people that you, you you relate and there's a brother and then we were just reading i think i don't i don't remember the text of the book but it was defining the success uh, that uh, if you want to be successful um the letter s you have to select your goals what are your goals and then and then you letter you we have to unlock the power that god invested in you mm-hmm. and then scene number one we have to be create creative you create each and every day and then c number two c you have to be committed to your, your dream and your vision mm-hmm. because you know what you want and then e you have to excel and then you have to be extraordinary mm-hmm. and then another s you have to submit to your vision mm-hmm. submit into your dream mm-hmm. and another s the last one surrender everything to god success to me it's when you look back you look at the fruits of working hard not sleeping at night you seeing other people benefiting from your dream and your vision and then when you look into your savings and say wow my kids they are kids and another generation they're going to benefit out of my success and also out of the vision and the hard work and the tears and trials and tribulations when you look back when you are alone because i tell people that when you look where you come from look at your success you must be alone and then look back and say hmm am i impressing people Mm. or am i impacting the lives of the people mm. when i walk into the boardroom i they scared of me or they feel at ease when i come into the boardroom when i go home do they run to the car mm. to see me or do they hide mm. because they see me mm. well sometimes there are people when they come to their families when they go and see them their family they run away because you you are you are you are telling them that I'm you what you are is because of me mm. yeah when I start you went to the university because of me mm. you are eating because of me mm. and then you are taking your success to be something to them that is heavy on them they are eating they are thinking about you they worship you if i'm successful they must be able to connect and pray for me mm. because when we die olina when lina dies do we say thank you lord or do we really cry and say mm. but when you go around and say wow mandela foundation mm. oh cool oh wow what a legacy oh mandela mm. a children hospital Mm. you must live a legacy to me that's how i define success that live a legacy and then let your success be be powerful to you first be i, I must not wait for you to tell me that i'm successful mm, mm, mm. and to me i don't define success because of the car that i drive and the house that i live in no but when i walk around when i go um to uk uk z n mm. and trevor willis the professor at linda thank you so much for giving uh, uh students 20 bursaries that you remember that girl she's a doctor you remember that guy now works for isolezo he's a journalist yeah. it to me when i land in job or land in deben and then i find a young girl coming to me crying and then i say why are you crying and said do you remember me and i say i don't remember you But Linda, I just want to say thank you. You gave me a bursary in 2010. You gave me a bursary in 2008. Now I'm working. Oh, I say yes. And then when I go around and I go to Palito, I see a guy, old guy, who owns a security company. I called that man to say I am looking for a bodyguard for someone. And then he came when he sat down, he cried. And I said, "Why are you crying?" No, 2005. you motivated me i was down and out i was from prison you said to me there is a second chance this company it is called the industry you don't know when we work i tell them 
that what I am today is because of you. That's what I'm talking about. That you have to go around and then feel small, and when you hear such stories and say, "Wow!" And again, I cannot give you help and then tell the tell the whole world if this hand is giving you help, this hand mustn't see. Yeah. Sometimes when I give food parcels, I don't take pictures. I tell my team keep the pictures in the office. After ten years, after twenty years, when I'm gone, you can say he did such thing to people. So to me, I define success like that. When I go, when my mother was living, when I go home, and my mother, she would take my hand and say, "I love you, Danam." When it's my birthday, I would go home and buy her some a band and buy her a big TV. And she would say to me, "It's your birthday." I say, "No, I want to give back. Thank you so much for not aborting me, ma." And she would take her hand and put it here and say, "Kungula kusisem dana, may God bless you." So getting into the car, I wanted to feel the Lindo Guse, the mess or the young Lindo Guse, because. In each and every heart of us, there is someone inside of us. There is a young boy, there is a young girl in you. So I mean, I want to see that young boy in me say, "Yes, we've done it." And then I say, "Hey, shut up. Hey, hey, keep quiet." Mm-hmm. So to me, that's how I define success. It's a legacy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, I'm out of words. That's it's very inspiring. <laughs> very inspiring. Yeah. And. What I'd like to ask you now is our very last question for our mm. viewers out there that are very inspired by all that you've said so far right now, reminding us that there is a second chance that people should yeah. give up, and the fact that you were able to create something out of yourself, out of four wives and many children, thirty-three, right? From my my father, yes. Yes, yes, from your father, and you've created. Linda Sbia that we all look up to. What advice can you give to all those young people that are watching right now? What advice can you give to them? Wow. One, please. If you can, if your family can afford to pay for the edu- education, please go to school. Mm. Please go go to the that university, go to school, go get a degree, get a diploma. It's important. Do it. You're not doing it for your mother, your sister, your brother. You're doing it for yourself. Friend of mine, Dr. Dibane, when he defines dream, he says you have to have a desire. As a young person, you're in business, you're school, you must have a desire. Ukshi segela, I want to be great. I want to be the best. There are two things: is either I'm on stage, people clapping hands for me, or I'm with the audience, clapping hands for someone. But your dream can push you, and then you tell yourself, "No, I mean I can make it." You must have a desire, and then you must have a revelation of your destiny. Where are you going? Where are you going? If I wake you up at night and say, "Wake up, Vuka," where are you going? A revelation of your destiny. Where are you going? Sometimes I drive around. And then I prophesy. I speak life into my dream and say, "I am 45 years old. Mm. I want A, B, C, D. I want to go to my grave when I'm empty." Revelation of your destiny, and you have to expect great things from your dream. Don't be negative. Be positive about your dream. I'm positive. Write down your dream. Write down. Your, your vision, your plans, your goals. Be, be that person. You are expecting great things from your dream, and then you must have an attitude, a positive attitude. Every day, I am positive, positive attitude. I'm unique. I'm great. I'm the best. You, I'm, I'm, I'm the one of a kind. When you must have an attitude, and you must. Maximize the moment. Eat and every day maximize the moment. When Mandela was in South Africa and Oprah Winfrey, I was not invited, but I went there. I wanted to meet Oprah Winfrey. 
I met Madiba in 1996. But Madiba, when he was in, 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 in Harding with the Oprah Winfrey, I drove myself. I pushed because I'm always a positive. When I wanted to meet Dr. Miles Monroe, I did the same thing. When I wanted to meet the Bishop T.D. Jakes, I did the same thing. When I wanted to meet Petrus Mutepe, I did it. So nothing is impossible. You have to run your race that is set before you because it's not over until you win. Let's run Ushogashe mm. Uti. It's not over until you win. Don't come to me and tell me, no, at home, we are poor. My mother didn't go to school. Oh, my father. Oh, God, I can't do it. Oh, I'm on your wheelchair. I'm not, no, don't. <laughs> no, I mean, I was born in the villages. No, I said, it doesn't work. Ibu Zuma was the president mm. for 10 years or nine years. Mm. He never went to school. Mm. I come on here. If Madiba went to Robben Island for 27 years, mm. if Tokyo Sehwala went to prison for 11 years, if mm. Zuma went to prison for 10 years, mm. come on, guys. No, you can make it. Mm. And then you must, you know what I like about you, Star? You say women empowerment. Women, but women, please, the beauty and brains, beauty and brains, think out of the box as a woman. Believe in yourself. Walk like a billionaire, walk like a millionaire, mm. walk mm. like you, you finished your MBA, your degree, your diploma, carry yourself, be positive, the way you talk, hi, what is it, hi, hey, I'm not okay, I can do anything, there's nothing in my me. you must have a clear picture, clear vision, see your vision, see yourself in five years to come, whatever, fail forward, I was telling my son, I said to the is on the way, I said, hey, Tando, listen, I want you to fail, and he said to me, no, what do you mean? I said, no, you must fail. He said, why? I said, you must fail forward. Come back to me and said, Baba, I fail. Fail forward. Mm. You know what you want. Push. Mm. I, we want to score goals. Please run, but stop. Mm. In your position. Mm. All the time. You mean that when you as a as a young person, as a young woman, understand your position. Have a clear vision. Mm. and your plan and your goals and whoever the meter whoever you want to meet you will meet that person and then you can go to the top as long as you believe it is not over until God says it's over you are wonderful, you are powerful and then you can do it black person, you're on your own Still, mm. black man, you're on your own so mm. please I'm not apologetic mm. yes, I'm, I'm black and so what yes, I'm an Indian, so what I'm a Chinese, so what? Mm. So I'm white, so what? No, I'm running my race. I know who I am and I know what I want. I'm still running my race, sister. I'm still running my race. I know what I want. So to your fans, to your followers, please make sure you run the race that is set before you. Mm, 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 mm. Run the <laughs> race that is set before you. It's not <laughs> over until God says it's over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Wow. I feel yeah. so motivated and inspired right now. And I'm you inspired. I that you said that you said people must go to school. I, yeah. I love how you mentioned that as well. And and yeah, it's very inspiring because nowadays everyone just feels as though let me drop out so yeah. I can do what I want to do. Yeah. No, because so and so was motivating me. I was saying, no, he never went to school. She didn't go to school. Yeah, I can make it. If him, if ah, uh, uh, no, 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 no. If every day you must look at your fingerprints, check everything. Look at your thumb, mm. your fingerprint. If you like, if you like it or not, our fun and our mawak. Mm. Yeah. You came alone. Mm. You will die alone. Mm. We'll bury you. So, leave the mark and the legacy behind you go to school be the best try your best make sure would now people they have they must clap hands for you who be on the podium and speak every day maximize the moment wow that was a mic drop moment right there thank <laughs> you so much thank you so much mr Magic Linda Spia for gracing us with your presence today here on yes. Tat Talks, where we walk the walk. So everyone, you can find Mr. Spia on 
Instagram, Twitter. Are you getting that up and running? Yes, Twitter and Linda underscore Sibia on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Instagram, Mr. Magic Sibia. Mm -hmm. On Facebook, Linda, Mr. Magic uh, Sibia. It's not over. <laughs> yes, it's not over. Thank you so much for coming today. And we will indeed catch up with you. Please do follow Mr. Magic Spear and keep in touch. Be inspired, be motivated. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>